Hello everybody! Thank you for tuning in this afternoon. My name is Erica Place. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for Story County Conservation and I am so excited to be bringing this live stream to you today for three reasons. Uh, first of all, if you haven't noticed, it is perfect weather outside today. We could not have asked for better weather for this live stream event. Um, I want you to watch the whole thing, but as soon as it is over, promise me that you will go outside and soak up some of the sunshine because it is gorgeous. The second reason I am so excited about this live stream event is because um, this topic is kind of right up my alley. Uh, if you know me personally or professionally, I'm kind of a bird nerd. I really geek out over this stuff. And you all and I get to witness something amazing today and that is the return to the wild of several birds that have recovered from either illness or injury and you'll get to hear more about their stories and see them up close in a moment. Uh, so get your snacks ready, get your drink, get snuggled up on the couch because you don't want to watch the show um, or you don't want to miss the show as soon as it starts. So get ready. Uh, lastly, the reason I'm excited is because as you can see behind me, I am joined by three natural resource professionals who are tirelessly passionate um, about what they do. And something that I think a lot of people don't realize is that this conservation field, this natural resource field, it's kind of a small world. Um, we all know each other. Maybe we went to school together, um, we've worked together in past jobs, um, maybe we work together as part of different organizations but on shared projects. It's a small world and it's a it's a tight-knit community and uh, I think a lot of times you know we, we think if we are sharing the stage with another organization um, it might diminish our voice somehow but that is absolutely not the case. I firmly believe that we can all get more done together. That is true for all causes, right? So by having two organizations or you know as many organizations um, as possible together working on something you can get more done. Um, all of our organizations might be different sizes, we have different funding sources, maybe our mission statements read a little bit differently, but at the core what we're all trying to accomplish is really the same and that is uh, protecting and improving our natural resources and inspiring others to do the same. So today we are amplifying each other's voices and getting more done by teaming up together for this annual release, uh, which is something that we've done uh, for more than several years now. <laughs> uh, typically this time of year we'd have the annual release out at McFarland Park, which is uh, the kind of headquarters of Story County Conservation. There would be pie, there would be music, there would be a big party. Obviously we can't do that same format this year, but that is okay uh, because I think in this virtual format you'll find um, in a lot, some ways it might even be better because you'll get to see the birds up close, right? Um, I'm going to try real hard not to get totally up in their business, but I'll be getting the camera in close as they have these birds um, ready to be released. Secondly, uh, you get to ask your questions and we're gonna do our best to answer them throughout this live stream. So please ask away. And uh, if we don't know the answer to your question or we don't get to it uh, during the live stream, we'll tune back in later and uh, get you an answer. And uh, lastly, you get to get a sneak peek at one of Story County Conservation's new properties. It is not open to the public yet. Uh, we just acquired it. It's so new that we don't even have a name for it. Uh, so you get to kind of get a behind the scenes experience today as well. So thanks again for tuning in. I hope you are as ready as I am to see these birds uh, take off. And uh, I'm gonna turn this around here so you can see and hear my friends a little bit better. Give me one moment here. Here we are. Alrighty, so here we have Kay Newman. She is the Executive Director for SOAR, which stands for Saving Our Avian Resources. And um, 
I met Kay quite a while ago. In fact, it popped up on my Facebook notifications this morning um, that seven years ago on this day, I was uh, transferring a red-tailed hawk to you, Kay. So it was <laughs> fun memories for me. And uh, she does amazing work. So Kay, I would like you to share with the audience a little bit more about what SOAR is and your mission and um, what brings you out here today. So SOAR, um, we do wildlife rehabilitation and we work with birds. So hawks, owls, eagles, and falcons, the raptors are the main um, group of birds that we work with. We also, every once in a while, see a swan or a heron or, you know, a few other things. And like you said, um, we are so lucky in Iowa, we, we have a pretty good network of wildlife rehabilitators. And so if we get calls on other things that we can't handle, we have a wonderful songbird rehabilitator in Urbandale and some mammal people that, that are specializing in those species. And we're usually able to get people to someone that can help with that animal. And um, rehabilitation is, is we take in injured wild animals and try to fix whatever's wrong with them and release them back out into the wild. That's the main goal for wildlife rehabilitation is to release them back out into the wild. And that's what we get to do today. So this is like extra, extra fun day. Um, we soar seas over a bird a, a day. So we are looking at 350 to 400 wild patients each year. So very busy. And and I can tell that people are getting outside and doing things like they're supposed to because we have seen more patients coming into us, I think just because people are spending more time outside. So so way to go. So we have not been able to do our normal programs but um but we are still working with our wild patients. And so um I'm going to have you pause. Okay, sorry, we're hearing from the audience that they can't hear you very well. So I am going to take a step back a little bit from Kay so we're properly social distanced. It's like way up high. Yeah. Um, and so I will try to talk louder, but if I talk louder, I get higher. So I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, you guys. Um, we have five birds with your speaker closer to the mic. This is why I'm not in charge of the technology. You guys, everyone else is in charge. Um, we have five birds to release today. Is that right? No. Seven. Seven. Um, we have released one red tail already. We do an annual donation to the Animal Rescue League's auction. Um, and the people that um, bought that auction item have released a red tail. It went beautifully. So as, as was stated, it's a gorgeous day. Um, we're going to do our red tail, our second red tail first for you guys. This is a juvenile red tail. This is this year's baby. And so he has actually one little adult tail feather coming in. He's not going to like this at all. I've got one little adult tail feather coming in right there. One nice red one. If you're so, able to, Kay, we're still having trouble having the audience hear you, so we may need okay. you to. How's that? Is that better? Is that better, everybody? Can you hear her better now? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear her better. Okay, these guys are gonna keep their masks on. Just yep. In case. Yep. We've... All right. So this guy, um, hit by car, had some bumps and bruises. Was not using a leg, so I think he got hit on one side. Um, had some significant bruising, no broken bones, but a, bruising is enough. If everyone's had a, a really bad bruise, you don't want to use that leg or that arm for a while, and that got him down enough so he was starting to starve. And I think the whole impact knocked his tail feather out. Oh, so he's okay. in the process of, you know, he doesn't have a full set of juvie feathers, had one pulled out, and they immediately start growing in, and he's growing in one adult feather. So he's gonna, he's gonna look pretty cool when he gets out there to all the other red tails. Ooh, we got one red feather already. Um, this is a male and smaller than the females. Eyes are yellow. Their first year as they age, their eyes will start to turn brown. Um, brown eyes take them 10, 15, 
quite a few years to get to that dark, dark brown eye color. So that's a way that we can kind of um, get an, a guesstimate of their ages even when they come in with a red tail. So usually their first molt, so a year from now, um, he will be molting all those feathers, tail feathers again, and will grow in a nice dark red set of feathers that, that first summer. He will not start to nest until the next year. They have to have that adult plumage in order to set up a territory nest. So basically, high school student, college student. <laughs> a college, own, college student um, red tail. Uh, but he <laughs> has been out and about a little bit on his own. He's nice and fat right now. <laughs> and we'll be looking for some mice. Yeah. Uh, for lunch or dinner, or probably really does not even need to eat until tomorrow. So yeah, that so. that's a good uh, point, Kay. So do they only eat mice? What would this so species usually eat? So hawks are a generalist predator, and so they're going to eat whatever is easiest and most available. And so coming up soon, we will have a big grasshopper um, explosion, kind of that end of the summer grasshopper explosion. The red tails will definitely take advantage of that. Mice are probably, for a male red tail being smaller, mice are really make up most of their diet. Um, a few snakes, smaller rabbits, um, rats, mm -hmm. chipmunks, <laughs> squirrels are a little hard to catch and they'll bite. So a lot of times they'll end up not avoiding, avoiding squirrels. Um, but this guy definitely is going to be a mouser. A I mouser, predicted. okay. And he likes this type of habitat. So this is this is what we would call, this is just a freshly mown prairie. It's going to grow back again. Um, but they want to have an open area to hunt in, plus a tree line to take shelter into and to provide hunting purchase. So they're considered an edge species. Open areas to hunt, big broad wings, very good at soaring, not really good at maneuvering up and over bushes and around tree trunks and things like that. So that's why they need this nice open area to hunt in. Nice big tall trees to, to find some shelter and some good secluded hunting perches in. Nice. And he is way more than ready to go. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit closer here and I'll kneel down so I'm hopefully out of the out of the exciting flight path. And uh, as Kay mentioned, this is an edge species. So this bird is probably going to take off for the trees here pretty quickly. So I'll do my best to keep the keep the phone on him, but uh, he might be quick. So. Kay just said they fly best if you toss them into the wind. So. All right, on the count of three, one, two, three. <laughs> Couldn't decide where to go. Made several different direction changes. Just checking it out, checking this new spot out. Some great habitat. Awesome. I don't know if you can still see him, but he just landed in a tree. All right. <laughs> Good release. Now, Kay. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I did, nice yeah, did, did some loop-de-loops loops for us. And Kay, I don't know, maybe you mentioned this. How long did you say that bird had been in your care? Um, let me see. He has probably only been with us for maybe a month, maybe six weeks. And so when birds initially come in, um, they are in intensive care, basically, so that we can keep them at a nice temperature. So we were, we run definitely we're running air conditioners for everybody last week in ICU. Um, make sure that they are eating well, have their body weight back up, everything looks normal. Otherwise, um, really did not need any medication for bruising. We do worm everyone. I know that's something so exciting. Everyone wants to know. <laughs> parasites are not are not our friends, and so they they go away. Um, and then we have large flight pens that, that be, they all go to so that they can practice going back and forth. And this guy being a youngster, I know he's been out and about before, but still I think it was, they always kind of look a little surprised. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I get to go. I get to fly no, again, I, yeah. I wasn't planning that. Yeah. You know? We did get so, one um, question from the audience from um, Marlis. She wants to know, will he stay in that area? And I may, I'll back up a little bit if you're able to okay. take your mask off again um, so the audience can so, hear you well. 
these juvenile red tails really are dispersers. They're going to be moving around. And so I'm guessing he may hang out here for a couple days, have a couple meals, and then he's going to be drifting around. And, and they really aren't going to set up a territory for another year. So he just gets to do whatever he wants. May stay for the winter, may have a little bit south. Um, I'm guessing this guy's going to go every which way. Our owls are going to be a different story. Okay. That sounds like a segue, huh? Is that what's up next? <laughs> All right, so as Kay is, um, woo, that might have been the microphone there. Um, as Kay is getting the next bird ready, I do want to just share a little bit more about um, this property. Let me get this um, camera turned around here. There you go. So, um, I mentioned this is a new property to Story County Conservation. We just um, acquired it and actually it's a contract purchase, which means that we're technically still fundraising for this property. Um, it is not open to the public yet. We, um, as you can kind of see here, there are trees. Behind me, behind that tree line is the South Skunk River. Um, so this is situated just south of Story City. It's 35 acres right along the South Skunk River, and it is a mixture of habitats. So there are um, some woodlands here, obviously. There's some sections of um, what you can tell used to be oak savanna. Um, so there's some nice big mature oaks here. Obviously, um, everything back here is going to be a reconstructed prairie, um, which is another uh, really unique thing about this property that it has so many different types of habitat and can be home um, to so many different types of, of species, bird and otherwise. There are also some oxbows or some old river channels um, from where the river used to um, be uh, many years ago, as well as some just kind of wetter, almost wetlands um, here along the river too. So. There's a lot of um, great opportunity, um, especially since it is a part of the river corridor, uh, for this to be used by a lot of different native Iowa species. And as I mentioned before, we're still fundraising for this property. Um, we expect to restore some of the habitat um, types that I mentioned. So restore the prairie, work on some oxbow and wetland restoration. And uh, we are going to plan to have this open for archery hunting and our goal is to have this all finished and ready for you guys to enjoy um, probably fall of 2021 so about a year from now so stay tuned for that if you would like to get involved um, and help us purchase this property one way that you can do that is by going to storycountyconservation.org and become a partners member Every year, our partners membership program picks a different project to fundraise for, and all of the membership dollars that year go to that project. So this is the project for fiscal year 21, and we would love your support to um, help make this uh, a new wildlife area for Story County. And it will stay a wildlife area. There won't be um, maintained trails here. It will be um, you know, a natural wildlife area. Um, so you can just walk out here and, and sit in the prairie or sit in the woodlands, um, maybe do some bow hunting or bird watching or, or whatever your favorite way is to get outside. So it looks like they are ready. Let me turn the camera back around here. All right, who do we have with us now? We have, we have two screech owls. Um, they are, they're full grown. These are both young of the year. Young of the year. Um, they're both gray. Screech owls <laughs> can come in red. So wherever you see gray on these guys, you would see a rusty red. They also come in an intermediate color, which is kind of in between red and gray. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any real pattern with the colors. It, um, we've gotten in whole nests of screech owls and two have been red and two have been gray. So I think it's just kind of like people hair color. There's just some variation. And so huh. red must be as camouflage as gray is for these guys. Um, so they are not gonna go very far. <laughs> owls, our resident owls, our screech owls, our barred owls, and our great horned owls, all through banding studies, um, stay very close to their release sites. And so 
choose their habitat type really carefully because we know they're not going to be able to go out and about and looking for things and going up in big sores. They're, they are going to want to stay undercover and in this wooded area. And so this is a perfect spot for them. It borders the South Skunk River. The South yeah. Skunk River. <laughs> um, there's so many rivers, um, which is which is good habitat for them. And it is connected. And so this is this is a 30 acre piece. A new piece but it adds on to other pieces that are downstream and upstream and there's also private land that is in um, been kept in very good um, forested river bottom habitat for these guys the dead trees here are really important oh, a very here, pretty I'll one I'll over there see if we can see that has a lot of nice little woodpecker holes in it um yeah so those are are as I'm walking away from Kay, you probably can't hear her oh, anymore, but um, shoot, here, these trees are great for a lot of different species. Just because a tree is dead does not mean that it is done. Um, it is still going to be used by woodpeckers, um, other cavity nesters, bluebirds, um, and, and these guys too, these little, little screech owls. So. Um, if you are living in central Iowa right now, you may have a different feeling about dead trees. <laughs> but uh, these guys love them. So if on your property you're able to leave some dead trees standing, if you know that they're out of the way, they're not going to um, fall on a house or fall on a trail, um, that can really provide some really great habitat for our native species. And especially these guys, are, they're extra small owls. So they are definitely mousers and insect eaters again, um, but they also kind of have to watch their back for some other predators. And so having a secure place to hide um, in a cavity is, is absolutely essential for them. They need to have a place to, um, you know, a good quick getaway place. Um, so this should be definitely kind of a dark shadowy area. Perfect. Um, this is as big as they're going to get. They are still molting some of their face feathers in, so they look <laughs> a little bit like the bad hair yeah, day this, this one's, sort of thing going on. It's got, um, got quite but, the do going on yeah, today. Yeah, but very, <laughs> very much close enough to, to being able to um, listen for mice and all the things that they need to do with those facial disc of feathers. Both of these birds came in as, again, hatch your birds. These guys were just hatched this year. Um, something happened to their nesting cavity, something happened to the parents. Every time we get a call about baby birds, we go through a whole long list of things because the most important thing we want is to be able to keep them with their parents if at all possible. And so if there are situations where it's not heard, it's large enough to almost be flying, these guys get put back in a little bush. <laughs> um, and we have reports of people going, oh, and then we saw the parents that night. And so, um, but these guys were in some sort of situation where that was not going to be possible. It would have been too dangerous. They were too small. Um, may have had some injuries, may have had some black fly bites, things like that going on that they needed to come to us. But I think, what do you think? Are, Are they ready? ready? Let's get it one quick look at, at the pair here. So... Like Kay said, this is as big as the species gets. And again, this is called the screech owl, eastern screech owl. And they come in gray, they come in a red rusty color, and all around they are just kind of uh, cute, aren't they? <laughs> the songbirds are already getting ready to be angry. The songbirds are on to oh. us. If you, I don't know if you can hear them, but they, they recognize that there's uh, something going on here. All right, I've got you both in the frame here, so... So you can just, op just open okay. your hand right. and see what he does. Yeah, because sometimes he, he's like... There we Woo! Go. <laughs> he's good. He went... He oh, let's good. see if I can catch up to him. Oh, There's that tiny little dot flying through the sky. You probably couldn't... Get mine. <laughs> probably couldn't see him go, but... All right, now for number two. Woo! Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. as Kay said, um, these guys are not going to fly far, so it's great that we have this area that is um, connected to so many other properties uh, across the county. Sorry, let me get the camera turned back around. Um, it's great that we have this property that is so um, 
connected whoops, to other properties via the river. The river corridor is a great way for them to travel. And um, Story County Conservation is um, excited about the river protection that this property offers. Um, it will help animals obviously with habitat, um, give another spot for you to do some outdoor recreation and provide some, some river protection as well. So as they are still getting ready with the next um, bird or set of birds, I wanted to mention another thing that you might not know about Story County. Uh, Story County was just this year designated as a bird friendly county. So if you are living in Story County, you can give yourself a pat on the back uh, because Story County is already doing a great job of bird friendly practices. Bird Friendly County is a new designation through an organization called Bird Friendly Iowa. And it's similar to um, like a Tree City USA designation. So it's an education and outreach campaign. It celebrates that we know that birds are not just um, a pretty thing or something that you see um, when you go outside sometimes. They're an integral part of the environment. Uh, they are integral to our economy. Think about all the people who go out and bird watch for fun. Um, it's amazing that we have so many places to do that in Story County. And because there are places in Story County that brings people in um, and, and boosts the economy. And it's a, a great quality of life piece um, to have, have birds. Um, I know for me, they, just bring such a sense of peace, you know, sitting and watching the bird feeders. Uh, earlier this spring, uh, right when COVID um, started coming to the forefront, we did a video of just watching the bird feeders at the Conservation Center. I don't know if any of you um, had seen that, but uh, it really is just a, a peaceful thing. Uh, it clears my mind to just watch these little birds um, and see what they do and how they interact and um, I'm just a bird nerd all around. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Um, so yeah, Story County is designated as a bird-friendly county now. You will start seeing um, bird-friendly county signs getting put up throughout the county um, to kind of celebrate that designation. And um, as part of this designation, it's going to be a continued education and outreach campaign, right? So Story County Conservation is going to be trying to find ways to help make bird friendly practices more available or um, bring awareness to bird friendly practices. Um, so for instance, putting decals on your windows so birds aren't as likely to run into them. Um, we have fishing line recycling stations at pretty much every single spot where you can go fishing in the county so that birds aren't likely to get tangled up in discarded fishing line. We also have um, lots of different partnerships like with schools, um, planting pollinator gardens, because um, not just insects are pollinators, birds are too. Uh, so putting habitat on the ground. We also have a requirement now that the board pass that um, non-toxic ammunition is used in the Story County hunting areas to again help protect the birds um, that are living in or migrating through this county. So. Um, keep watching for more information about Bird Friendly County and what Story County Conservation is going to be doing um, to continue to promote that. Oh, it looks like we got some friends ready here. Do you hear them? <laughs> Who can guess what these are? I don't know if you heard that sound, but that just came out of... Woo! Ready to go. All right, ready? <laughs> well, let's. Go. You want to let that one go? Oh, yes. Is that one antsy? This is a female. All right. She's ready to go, huh? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, it is not easy to catch these birds on the phone as they zip around. <laughs> oh, just putting on quite a show. Yeah. Very, oh, did you see the tail? Mm -hmm. Very pretty. So, Kay, tell us what right. we just saw. That's still it. It's an American kestrel. Um, that's a female American kestrel, and it has a male. 
Um, these again, just like the screech owls, both came in as hatchier babies. They are also like screech owls. They're, they're cavity nesters um, and things can happen to cavities. And so he, she and finally he decided to land. <laughs> nice. um, and so we end up, and they end up nesting in, these guys will nest in buildings too. They'll, they'll tuck under eaves or if there's a little hole. And so we did get a call once for falcons in a bar. Yeah, in a bar. In a bar. And it was that something had come loose um, from Ooh. the ceiling and the babies had all dropped down into the bar. And so, yeah, we ended up, that, that just wasn't a healthy situation for a young customer. So. I don't know if you can hear, but she's still up there making racket. She's, she's, giving it, giving she's a nice, happy right to be free. free <laughs> Um, so just like our, our little screech owls, these kind of are the daytime version. So these are daytime hunters or screech owls are going to wait till it's dark before they come out and hunt. But these guys are mousers, grasshoppers, or they will eat small birds, they'll eat small snakes, um, a lot of other insects. They are a falcon, so they have long narrow wings that come to a point. They're quite Just fast flyers compared to a lot of other species of raptors. They will do what peregrines do, which are the, the diving champions of the world and can dive over 150 miles an hour to catch prey. These guys will dive, but they're usually going to the ground for something. So they'll, they'll do a nice little soup or a dive and then they'll quick flip around and they'll grab whatever it is with their feet as they hit the ground. Um, the male, if you look at the back of his head. So the back of the male's head. He has two spots. Uh -huh. And those two spots are, look like eyes. And so if he is down on the ground eating a mouse and something is above him, they tend to think, oh, he can see me and I can't steal his food. Or catch Smart. Him. So they think it's kind of a defensive mechanism to um, help them out because again just like the screech owls they're they're not real large and so they have some other issues that they have to be worried nice. about. Nice. We just got a question from Debbie and I think you'd mentioned they are from the same nest right? These were yes. siblings? Yes. Yes. Okay so a, a male and a female. These are brother and sister. Okay. And so just like our red tail they're probably gonna hang out get you know get some food you know it's like a little rest stop on wherever they're gonna go next. And so these guys might actually nest next year. They would be old enough as a one-year-old, but kestrels do tend to leave. They tend to leave Iowa for the winter time and go south. So they will be gearing up to, to head out for migration. Mm -hmm, I know we I have see. kestrels that stick around year round. You can usually always find one somewhere or another during the winter time if you're looking for one, staying on territory. But I, I bet that these guys will, will feel that push and they'll head south for the winter. Nicole asks, do females have those same markings on the back of their head? They do. Okay. Yes, they have some little, and there she goes. So how do you tell then the male from the female kestrel? So. Or can you? You can't move your hand. You're <laughs> yeah. one of the few raptors that have can you see a difference in color. There? So, so if you notice when the female took off, she had, she was kind of a rusty color with darker brown stripes all over her back, mm -hmm. um, basically brown and rusty colored. The male kestrel has a nice blue cap and dusty blue back to his wing, but you'll have to wait to watch for that. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see his blue and, cap, but you can't see the blue wings right now. And a <laughs> rusty tail. Okay. So there's some quite quite a few color distance plus a size difference. Oh. So if he's ready to go when you want to watch for his blue wings. I think Linda can just lift that hand on. Oh. Ready, Sometimes. I think we're ready if you want to do slow. I think they'll just hang oh. on a little bit. Not for very long. Got to see him for a split <laughs> second a there, very huh? Nice falcon. Oh, Fran asked a really good question. She said, do you track the birds that are released? And if so, what's the survival rate? So, that's a very good question. And, and as you can imagine, very difficult to answer. Mm -hmm. um, and so what SOAR has done in the past is that we have banded birds through the, through the bird banding lab. Um, and so we've gotten quite a bit of data back that way. Um, that requires another permit. And I don't a know. whole nother set of reporting. <laughs> um, and the, the bird banding lab has trying, been trying to condense things. And so 
Um, we don't ban birds anymore. Maybe a few interesting birds will get a hold of a master bander and see if we might be able to band under them. So that's one way. Um, and that's pretty much the only way it, to put transmitters on things is very, very expensive and um, not something that, that we're, we're um, able to do. So those are really the only two ways to track these guys. Um, and we just, from the banding data, I think we got a horned owl back 11 years after having released him and banded him. We've gotten an eagle back three or four years after she was released, mm -hmm. and she did quite a bit of traveling. We work with Fish and Wildlife Service, who actually put a transmitter on one of our released eagles. And, and she the spent the summer up in Canada and the winters down in um, Texas Oklahoma border. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So some of these birds pretty travel much. pretty far. So, yeah, it, it would be pretty hard to then track the survival rate um, of the releases. Yes. But so, obviously, they're, they're having. Um, a second chance at life, of course. A second chance. So at this point in time, I feel like physically they're they're pretty close to being a wild bird after having been in the large flight pens and having their muscles um, worked back into shape. And so they pretty much have as best a chance as, as the wild birds that are out there too. The key really is for them to be able to find good habitat and a good home. And so that's why we're very excited to be able to partner with our county conservation boards. Uh, people in Iowa, you know, when you have something, you don't realize how good it is, <laughs> sort of thing. Um, you know, we just traveled to Minnesota for a while, and they, they don't have a county conservation board system, so they have state parks. Um, the, our, having a local county system creates a lot more habitat for us. We really rely on county conservation board areas for most of our releases. We can find the type of habitat that we need for the species that we're releasing um, in these county areas and and know that that habitat will be there and usually the counties are trying to connect it with other habitat pieces so we know our birds will have a travel corridor um, we have it pretty good here we need to appreciate it <laughs> oh, thank you for that nod Kay. i appreciate that i couldn't agree more that um we're so fortunate in Iowa to have a county conservation board system. Every county in Iowa has a county conservation department. Um, so we're really fortunate to have that here. Um, and yes, Debbie, that is still the kestrel that you hear out there. Um, there's one over to the west, uh, the male that was just released, and the female is still over to the east um, by the river. Both of them are kind of calling back and forth. So. Um, they sound like they're uh, content and they're going to hang out here for a while. So, do we have any more birds to release? Yeah, we, do. we do. Is this the finale? Whoop. I think Kay is on the other side of the truck getting, getting the bird out and, uh, oh, here she goes. Here, I'll come a little bit closer so everybody can hear you. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna walk to a better spot. Okay, so Kay is explaining that we're gonna take this bird closer to the river, and this bird is, I believe, a red-tailed hawk. No? Oh my goodness! This isn't. I just gave away the finale. The <laughs> barred owl. <laughs> this one will be fun too. Um. I really enjoy barred owls. A lot of people get them confused with barn owls. I hear those um, names used interchangeably and they are not the same species. So um, barred owls, you'll see in a moment here, are so named because of the barring on their feathers. Feisty. Very bitey. Very bitey. So let's walk with her maybe or him is it a she one now we don't have color to go by oh, um, males and females are the same color males and females are the same color she so said so go by size. okay <laughs> making the transfer here is the this is a challenge A male, okay. So Kay was saying 
Um, I think I was talking over Kay when she was explaining that you have to go by size to tell males and females apart. So. And remember, girls rule and boys rule. <laughs> Words of wisdom from Lynette, <laughs> another one of um, SOAR's uh, employees. So you, you're the communications director, right? Correct. So tell us a little bit about what that means. What does that job look like? Um, if, if I asked Kay once, I needed a title, and she says, all things tech and anything I don't want to do. All things tech and anything that uh, Kay doesn't want to do. <laughs> so if you visit our website, our Facebook page, if we donate money, then you are seeing some of my handiwork. Okay, so she was saying if you're on their social media pages, they're on Facebook, um, or on their website, or if you donate to them, that uh, you're basically working with Lynette. So. And I also do programming. She also does programming. <laughs> A Jill of all trades. <laughs> Woo! They have a really extraordinary bike power. <laughs> so. The kestrels are still talking. Uh, yeah, the, kestrels. the kestrels are so still talking is, out there. So, one quick thing about this guy. Yeah. Girl. girl. I think this one is a girl. Maybe they're both boys. You'd have to get a good weight on. But this Ooh. one is an adult. And so you can see here, there, she is molting in some new wing feathers. And so oh. it's kind of an uneven look to the wing. They molt in. They lose a few feathers at a time, molt in new ones, lose a few more, molt in new ones. And so this is one of our adult birds. And she, Ooh. I'm so happy you mentioned the fishing line thing. Yeah. <laughs> fishing line wrapped around her wrist. Oh, so gosh. Part of her wing and it had cut way down into the tissue. Um, it has healed up amazingly nicely. She's Good. A little bit of a divot on that side, but she's flying wonderfully in the fly pen. How long was she with you? This took a while. Okay. It took a while for her to build tissue. So this is probably a three month. Yeah, this is probably a three month stint. So um, she'll be excited to, to get back out to the wild for sure. So I was saying earlier that this is called a barred owl, which is not the same as a barn owl. This one is a really common Iowa owl species. And it is named, maybe I'll show you on this example that's holding a little bit more still. <laughs> um, they're so named because of the barring on their feathers. See how it makes. You don't want to move back to me, Yeah, just keep her face away from you. There we go. Oh, there we go. Pretty. So see the vertical barring on those feathers? That's where they get their name, barred owl. Um, which is not at all the same as a barn owl, which um, are not very common throughout the state anymore. So, um, you mentioned that we would walk closer to the river. Is that yeah. because that's where they're usually found? Yes. So, barred owl habitat. I'm just completely non tech. <laughs> I think the microphone might have died, so I'll just kind of right. stay close right. to Kay. So, barred, owl, barred owls live in river bottom timber. And so their habitat, um, large trees, because they're also a cavity nester, um, but they want kind of that open understory that comes from rivers flooding and ebbing. So mm. the, the flooding of the river kind of knocks back the understory a little bit under the trees, and so they have a little bit more open area to hunt in in that gotcha. shadowy forested area. So, so would they be eating aquatic things maybe? Do. interesting things like that because they're so associated with the water. Um, but mice and chipmunks and all of those things definitely come, come into play also. Gotcha. Um, and so they are, this one um, came in as a young of the year. Okay. Again. And so if we would stretch out his wings, um, it's all even. All the feathers grow in at the same time. Okay. Um, as they're growing. And so, um, um, so Debbie made a comment that she did not realize that they are so big. So they do look really big, but how, I mean, how heavy are these owls? How much do they weigh? So, not. <laughs> not? <laughs> they, like, they're great, great owl that looks ginormous and then they're, they're 
they're just all feathers and there's a little body in there. So these guys weigh, oh, probably six or seven hundred grams, which is not quite two pounds. No, so, so they're fluff, mostly fluff, absolutely huh? Absolutely mostly fluff. And mostly so fluff. For them to be hunting at night, those fluffy feathers help to muffle the sound. So gotcha. Like this nice little fluffy thing on your microphone <laughs> um, works the same way. Kind of absorb some of the air and, and lessens the noise of them flying through the air. These owls are giving us a great view of their talons. Um, what can you tell us about how those work? I mean, those look pretty formidable. They, and they also have feathers that go all the way down to the tips of their toes. Ah. Which I think is another sound muffling um, adaptation. I so see. Melons work just as you would expect them to. <laughs> <laughs> Very strong legs and feet. They actually have a locking mechanism with that um, calyx. It's basically like the, the hind toe sort of talon. So that once they get a hold of something, they can the, the tendon will actually lock it into place. They don't have to necessarily think about, oh, I have to hang on, I have to hang on. Um, so, so very effective tools um, for what they need to be doing. And so the, their beak also, these guys do use their beak a lot too in being able to capture and manipulate yeah, things. And so, yeah. um, so we'll, oh, we can see that in action right now. <laughs> so these are the... Who cooks for you all? Owl. <laughs> so who, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? Yeah, who can? <laughs> if you're not aware, that noise just came out of Terry and not the owl. <laughs> so these are the ones that you would hear, and they are, they're really quiet now because they have young that are out and about, and they're really not. And so this is a, again a good time of year to release birds. So I'm imagining there's there's <laughs> Those kestrels are still singing back there. I'm imagining that there's probably a barred owl territory here. Somewhere. Okay. It's a very good barred owl habitat. But again, the connectedness will allow these guys to move to a new unoccupied area. Okay. But this time of year, um, birds are not really concerned about territory as much. And so they're a little lenient about, oh yeah, somebody's, somebody's passing through, somebody's visiting. They're probably not going to get chased around very huh? much by the birds that are here on, on a nesting territory. Not quite so worried about their neighbors the neighbor at the moment. Just like our screech owls, they are not going to move very far from their release site. Um, and so important that they have a travel corridor, important that we have our nice um, river bottom timber area here oh. for them to, to, to be in. And so the, the great horned owl that we got that band return on um, had moved six miles from his release site in 11 years. Wow. So not gone very far, had found his territory, set up territory. We were able to release him back <laughs> into his territory with still with his band on. So, so we'll see. So lifespan is more than what you would expect for these guys. And so barred owls could easily get close to 20. Um, so this guy's oh, wow. Two, 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 20 two. years, maybe. Got it. Got it. 20 years. And this guy, they don't, they're... Sorry. <laughs> she is just <laughs> putting on a show. Really um, and so... Right over here. We'll see if we can get a... Oh, the cat's oh. yelling at her, so... The kestrel's still soaring just beyond those trees. The yeah. On the, oh, oh, well, yeah. yeah. Now... And now she's gone. <laughs> she's still somewhere up there. Yeah. And so we, we releasing multiple species is always kind of a um, a little bit of a quandary. We definitely did not want to bring a horned owl because those guys are the extra big super predators. Um, the, our screech owls should have had plenty of time to find a little nook in a cranny. We know that screech owls and barred owls can share habitat, um, so these guys should be fine. Our red tail and our kestrels are. They're gone. <laughs> so, we're really um, about so we just got a question from Paula and she wants to know what's the wingspan of these birds? Do we have a rough idea of how? They're maybe five feet. Oh, wow. I guess this is five feet. Never mind. Yeah. I keep thinking I'm six feet tall. <laughs> I don't know where that's um, So they have a pretty good wingspan. A little hard here. And, and actually, kind of a long tail. Mm -hmm. They do have really long so tails. That's a maneuverability thing. And so because they're working around trees and you know in through obstacles, that long tail helps helps them to maneuver. I see. 
Well, do we think we're ready to, to set these two free? They have brown eyes. Oh, so Terry. Brown eyes from the very beginning. Terry just, like, yeah, I mentioned. To think this, this, is it. <laughs> yes. this is it for me. Terry just <laughs> mentioned. Go, oh, yeah, that one is ready. <laughs> Terry was just mentioning that they have dark brown eyes and yellow beaks. So that's another um, way that you can yep. tell that they are a barred owl. owl. Yeah. Owls are yellow, screech owls are yellowish greenish. Um, our barn owl is the other one that has the dark green. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how do you let these guys go? I'm thinking maybe oh, get, get closer <laughs> to maybe that little opening and get him through there. I'll follow you. To the tree. So, like the other birds, I'm going to try my best, but they really take off fast. So. I'll uh, see if we can get this bird in the frame for the actual release. Maybe back up a little bit. And keep in mind, it's daytime, and these are nocturnal. Let him go! <laughs> 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 and so we know, yeah, he was ready. <laughs> that bird was ready. That was good flying. <laughs> so it's a little harder for them because this is really not their act, normal active oh. period. I'm not sure if you could hear Kay because I'm standing a little bit away from her right now, but she was just saying that to keep in mind that we're um, releasing these birds basically in the middle of the night <laughs> for them, um, or what, you know, would be our night. So they're not uh, fully aware and they're kind of sleepy and uh, we're wishing they were asleep right now, but they uh, should have a couple good hours to get situated before it's time to, to hunt for the night. So. Terry, are you ready to let this one go? All right, I'm gonna back up a bit here. We're good. Oh, landed right up in that tree. So as an adult, that was some good flying. Very good flying. All right. Is that everybody we've got? Wonderful. So I was totally wrong about there being a red-tailed hawk. <laughs> um, so thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, again, I just want to thank um, everyone here from SOAR. I don't know if you can still see them behind me here. Um, they do amazing work and we are so fortunate to have wildlife rehabilitators in Iowa. Um, if you don't live near here and you're curious about what Iowa Wildlife Rehabilitators there are, just Google Iowa Wildlife Rehabilitators and you can see who is close to you. Um, and chances are a lot of those places are going to end up transferring those raptors to these guys because they're, uh, they're kind of the experts. So um, is there anything that you guys would like to add? I'll flip this around again. Anything you want to add um, to our audience, what what are some final words here? Well, just, we, we kind of get, every once in a while, oddly, not very often anymore, um, what good is it to rehabilitate, you know, one castrel or one bardal? But before we rehabilitated 20 castrels and 25 bardals, so we're like up in the numbers. Um, but I, I understand in the big population scheme of things, some of these things are not going to make a, a difference in population numbers. Unless we rehabilitate the peregrine that nested on the Capitol building, which we did a few years ago, <laughs> we went back and raised some more peregrines. And so, of course, there are things like that where one does make, oh. make an absolute difference. But what we get, but, but what we get from this is a lot of information. We know what's causing problems for wild animals, which is really important. We see in bald eagles, half of our liver lead tests come back saying our bald eagles are coming to us with lead poisoning. That's very significant. That's like saying half of the people <laughs> going to an emergency room have some sort of poison in their system. Of course, we would be looking for that source um, and we would be wanting to prevent that. So I know hunting seasons are coming up. I think dove season starts next weekend. Um, our kestrels, any of the birds that we released today um, would not pass up a wounded dove. So please, please, please 
Um, use steel shot, use non-toxic shot um, for your upland hunting. Use copper slugs for your deer hunting. That's where we think most of the lead source is coming from for our bald eagles in the winter time. So by doing rehabilitation, we gather a lot of information and we get to talk to a lot of people, even during a pandemic. <laughs> um, and so people get very attached to the one bird that they have found. And that allows you to bring them in and let them know that this one screech owl is dependent on Story County Conservation Board having this beautiful area for it to get its second chance. And so I think every time we get an animal from someone, we try to link that animal with a conservation piece, with a habitat piece that we need to have for our rehabilitating animals. And so everyone is important and we try to stress that every time we work with a person and every time we work with an agency and it really seems like it's getting across i've been doing this for a long time now <laughs> um and i very i just don't hear that anymore everyone is so excited to follow the animal that they brought to us and to know what has happened to it um and to know that it's released eight birds today yeah. in story county and so um, gives them a good happy ending and a way to maybe contribute back. Yeah, it gives you a deeper connection maybe to um, to the natural resources. When you get to see a bird that um, you brought to soar, who needed help, and then you see that bird later get released, um, that's a pretty special feeling. So, Kay, how can people find more about soar if they are looking for more information? So you can go to soar's webpage, soarraptors.org, Sore has a Facebook page. This is all Lynette. <laughs> um, there's a donate now button on the on the web page. Um, she tries to put up some of the patients. So even if you haven't brought us something, you can follow some of the patients through their um, through their rehabilitation. The Facebook page has some nice videos. There's a YouTube channel, so you can watch some birds in our flight pen flying. Um, nice. This is pretty interesting. Some releases. We have a nice underwater video of an eagle taking a bath. <laughs> That's the most fun. GoPros. And all so yeah, go Lots check of... out those sorts of things, and yeah. hopefully by next year. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. there are lots of good ways to get linked up with SOAR if um, you just want to know more about what they do or um, maybe contribute or if you have a bird that um, needs to go visit them. And yeah, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, we have typically obviously done this event in person at McFarland Park, but um, if you are so willing, um, let us know if you enjoyed this kind of live feed option as well. Um, it would be pretty easy for us to do and maybe some of you who live farther away would then be able to um, take part in the release as well. So comment for us please if you would like to see a live feed be a part of next year's annual release. Um, and uh, one last plug for this property, I'll kind of end the video with just a quick walk around maybe as we walk back. Um, this property we're still fundraising for. It doesn't have a name yet. It's located just south of Story City and it offers um, some river protection and some great habitat for all of the species that were released today, plus many, many more. So if you are interested in more about this property, um, go to storycountyconservation.org and join our partners program. And your membership dollars will go uh, straight towards the purchase of this property. So thank you again. I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can take a little tour here. And uh, don't remember, or don't forget what I said about uh, getting outside today. It is gorgeous. So get some outdoor time. This will all be prairie. Like we said before, over there is the river. And back on this side of the property, again, this is 35 acres. Uh, back here are some wetlands and some oxbows that uh, are pretty neat too. You know, th this property is important because it offers so many different types of habitat and the previous landowner, you can just tell how much love um, she put into this property and to 
keep it available for wildlife and people to enjoy. Uh, so she did an amazing job and we're really excited for this addition um, for public area, uh, for the, the public to enjoy here in Story County. So again, this is not gonna open until probably next fall. Uh, so keep watching our website or our social media for updates on when this property will be available to come use. It will be maintained as a wildlife area, so there won't be trails through here, but there will be archery hunting. And you can see kind of back through there, that's um, an old oxbow. So you can kind of see how right through there it gets kind of deeper. You can see where the river used to be. And I'll just take one more little peek over this edge so you can see this side of the property too. Of course it's been kind of dry so there's not any water right now <laughs> but um, this is kind of a wetter spot um, so this would be more of a wetland area. Again kind of um, an oxbow, an old river channel. So alrighty. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, follow us for more content like this. Follow SOAR for more of their um, amazing work that they do. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your day.